next to wrap up the show with the superintendent of the Avondale School District, Dr. James Schwarz, joins us now on the show. Doctor, thanks for being with us today. Sure, thank you for having me. Appreciate having you on. So we're getting close to the beginning of the school year, and uh, of course now we're navigating the situation in the local area throughout the state of Michigan and the U.S. in terms of the spread of the Delta variant. How is that, if, if at all, impacting the plans as we approach the beginning of the school year in Avondale? Well, you know, of course, it's it's impacting plans as far as uh, our mitigation procedures go, um, you know, how we're going to be starting the school year. Um, it's not disrupting the plans in terms of what we're looking at instructionally, uh, in terms of being back uh, five days a week, you know, full schedule, full in seat, uh, back to, quote unquote, as much normalcy as possible. Um, so. Uh, from an instructional standpoint, from a professional development standpoint, from an operation standpoint, uh, it's it's not having much of an effect, um, you know. But we certainly uh, will be continuing with with most of our mitigation procedures that we had in place for the prior school year um, as we move forward. That have become, frankly, you know, sort of part and parcel to uh, just how we're used to operating. Uh, we had um, ended the school year last year in person from about mid-March to the end of the school year. Uh, and so again, many of these protocols have just become second nature now. You know, when you're talking about hand washing breaks and, and uh, you know, contact tracing or policies regarding visitors or non-essential staff, I mean, those are just things that now we've essentially become accustomed to that will just be rolling over into the new year. We're joined by Dr. James Schwarz. He is the superintendent of Avondale Schools with us today on the Megacast. So just to clarify for, for those that are tuning in that have children in the Avondale School District or, uh, or will have them begin in the school district this year, what are the policies that at all three mm -hmm. levels, elementary, middle, and high school, and other facilities for staff, for faculty, for students, and so on and so forth in, in, in terms of vaccination requirements or mask mm -hmm. mandates and so on? So with the, I'll start with the mask mandate. So with that, our Board of Education is highly recommending that we have uh, masks for uh, employees and students, um, uh, particularly for those individuals that are not vaccinated uh, or that have some type of immunocompromise uh, that, uh, you know, would warrant extra precautions. So. Uh, they are highly recommending that that masks be uh, worn at this time. Uh, that could change as time goes on, and we we see uh, you know what if any impacts there will be with the Delta variant um, as uh, you know uh, as that may or may not become more pervasive in our area. So you know we are watching closely the local statistics in regards to. Um, the impacts of COVID transmissions uh, in in our uh, in our neck of the woods, so to speak, it's it's quite low at this point. Um, so, you know, we we also acknowledge that Oakland County is about seventy percent vaccinated uh, for those uh, that are eligible for vaccination, uh, which is uh, on the higher side of, of most areas uh, in the in the country. Uh, and, and we know that childhood transmissions of COVID, again, particularly in our area, are quite low. Uh, so, um, you know, we certainly weighed, you know, the CDC uh, uh, recommendations, uh, the MDHHS recommendations, you know, the, the World Health Organization, the American Academy of Pediatrics. I mean, everybody uh, in the medical community has their opinions, uh, you know, and certainly, we have uh, we're in tune with all of those, uh, and and we're abiding by the highly recommended um, uh, statements by the primarily our CDC and MDHHS, uh, which say masks are highly recommended. So uh, we're essentially mimicking what they are touting. Uh, there is an order by the uh, CDC regarding public transportation, which includes school buses where students will have to be masked on school buses. So uh, in that venue, we will be requiring masks as they prescribe. So, um, and again, we'll be keeping our eye on uh, what is happening locally 
because of course in those recommendations by those entities they say you should uh, require your mitigation efforts depending on level of transmission in your local community uh, and so uh, we are abiding by that as well so uh, every day we are looking at those statistics uh, so for now, with masks, it is highly recommended uh, in our school district, and I believe in our neighboring districts as well. Pretty much most of Oakland County is, is adhering to that highly recommended uh, format for starting school uh, with the mandate for school transportation, school buses. Uh, and we'll be, we monitor that very closely. Um, as far as uh, other types of mitigations that we are in tune with. Uh, vaccinations, we are highly encouraging folks for vaccinations. Uh, we do not have a, a vaccination mandate, uh, but certainly we are highly encouraging those vaccinations uh, for those that are eligible to receive them, um, both on the part of families and of staff. Um, in school operations, you know, hand washing breaks, as I mentioned to earlier, will still continue. Uh, we will have regular hand washing breaks through the day, uh, K-12. K uh, social distancing, we're going to work to adhere to as much of social distancing towards three feet uh, as possible. Uh, that would be, you know, more or less dictating traditional seating in classrooms, um, uh, traveling in hallways, uh, and cafeteria as, as students, you know, consume their lunch and so on. So uh, we are striving to that three feet where we can uh, throughout the school day and each of the levels. Uh, for those that are choosing to wear masks, um, that we will continue with mask breaks. Uh, so to, to offer opportunities for kids to step away and be able to remove their mask for, for some time. Uh, we are not going to start the year with daily screening as we did last year um, should transmissions necessitate us to return back to daily screening procedures of students uh, and staff uh, we will do so uh, but as as of right now we are not instituting that uh, the contact tracing we will continue with contact tracing as uh, as we had uh, following the oakland county health department's protocols uh, as we have uh, last year, uh, so that will continue with any uh, any exposures. Uh, international travel, uh, any folks that are traveling internationally will be uh, following the CDC guidelines regarding that uh, and the quarantines surrounding uh, the international travel, particularly for those who are unvaccinated. Uh, visitors, any, any non-essential personnel, uh, we are discouraging from being in buildings, uh, again, uh, the less folks we have coming into the buildings that don't need to be there uh, at this point in time, the better. Uh, so we're discouraging, you know, non-essential employees or non-essential folks uh, in the buildings as we start the year. Uh, large scale assemblies for students, uh, we're also discouraging. Um, that would be like all school assemblies. Uh, so smaller assemblies are fine where students are able to space out uh, within a gymnasium or a cafeteria or auditorium. Uh, but, you know, whole school, close quarter type assemblies uh, were discouraging. We are continuing with our sanitization and cleaning schedules uh, where we are sanitizing particularly uh, high touch surfaces frequently throughout the day, doorknobs, handles, railings, uh, all of those types of high touch areas will have multiple cleanings throughout the day. And of course, we have masks and sanitizers in the classrooms available for students uh, as they uh, need and wish. So, uh, you know, those are a majority of our uh, mitigation strategies as we as we start the school year. At this point in time, with all the mitigation strategies you've just told us about, what's been the reaction from parents and families? You know, it, it, again, it's a mix. No matter what decisions you make, you're going to make people unhappy. You know, this is such a politically sensitive issue, unfortunately, uh, that. Uh, no matter what you decide to do, you're making people mad and you're making some happy. And, you know, uh, the, you know, the feedback is largely, um, and I'll say increasingly, is, is folks um, appreciate the, uh, uh, the personal choice 
frankly, we're hearing more from the folks that are, are, are liking the personal choice when it comes to uh, masks, uh, you know, and, and their choice as a family to, to do that or not do that. Um, you know, and, you know, again, we're not going to please everybody with what decisions are made. So, you know, we are following closely with, with what the CDC language is uh, and the MDHX language is uh, and, and abiding by that sense of choice that they are also uh, uh, following through with at this point in time. We're joined by Dr. James Schwartz on the Megacast. Uh, doctor, just another couple of minutes left before we say goodbye today. Uh, a great article earlier today uh, from Bridge Michigan Magazine about the budget situation, how it re relates to in-person learning this year. There's not that, uh, as it's quoted in here, maximum flexibility that gives districts necessarily the ability to switch from the in-person learning to all virtual. They're going, essentially going back to the previous requirements for in-person instruction in, in the schools. In the event that there are outbreaks in individual schools or throughout the school district, how is the budget situation impacting the school district's response to those? And is there any worry that potential outbreaks could impact what already is severely impacted funding due to COVID? Mm -hmm. So if, you know, if there's a chance that, you know, we are forced back into a remote situation uh, we are prepared to do so. Um, from a budgetary perspective, you know, we were able to utilize uh, the federal stimulus dollars that we received last year via, you know, the, the COVID money, so to speak, to buy one-to-one -one technologies for students. So we have all those. Uh, so if, if the need is there to switch, uh, we have those devices where we can activate those and, and move into that, that realm rather quickly. You know, teachers also have the experience of teaching remotely. Uh, so making that switch uh, uh, in a rather quick fashion will be certainly a lot more seamless than it was when we had to do it the first time back in 2020. Uh, so, you know, we have uh, a lot of seasoned folks that, that uh, are skilled, in, you know, and can and make that transition rather quickly. Um, we also have schedules uh, and, and mock-ups of schedules that we can flip to rather quickly uh, that we've created throughout time, particularly these last 18 months. Uh, so, um, so both from, a, from a, 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 a staffing and an effort perspective, as well as from a budget perspective, you know, I think we're well equipped to do so. Uh, we're very hopeful that that never comes to be again. Uh, and certainly we're working toward that end to not have that happen, um, and certainly, uh, you know, as we continue to encourage folks to get vaccinations and get out there, and you know, because we really don't want that to be a reality. So, but we are prepared in the event we have to.